All right, guys, it's your boy, Nick's Tape Banks, coming back at it again with another video, this time talking about the NBA draft and, of course, particularly how it relates to the Knicks. But before we get into that, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. The Knicks lack certainty going into this draft. We as Knicks fans have no idea what's going to be the outcome. What we do know is that Leon Rose believes that roster composition is a coach's decision. The Knicks have 12 head coaching candidates at the table. That pretty much means the Knicks can have all different types of play styles, all different types of priorities as far as roster composition. So we're pretty much left in the dark and speculating. The Knicks have a 50% chance to land either the seventh or the eighth pick in the draft. The Knicks have two other picks coming from the Clippers and the Hornets. The Knicks obviously need a primary playmaker. For most, that's looking at a player like LaMelo Ball, coming in at that third slot most likely. That means the Knicks probably won't be able to go after LaMelo. He'll probably be drafted far before we have the chance. But at 6'7", 190 pounds, it's kind of hard not to look at a player like him. We're talking about a point guard who's averaging 20, 9, and 8, shooting 38% and 25% from the 3. He's a triple-double machine on a nightly basis. And for that reason, he reminds me a lot of a Jason Kidd. Not super athletic, but he's able to pass that ball, has really high basketball IQ, and is able to impact the game in a lot of different ways. He may not be that primary scorer, but he can get everybody else started. He's going to be costly if the Knicks decide they want to trade up to try to acquire him. We'd probably have to give up a good deal of assets, which doesn't make sense for a team that's trying to compile as many assets as possible right now. The Knicks are more likely to have a chance looking at players like Killian Hayes. Now, Killian Hayes is probably the most polished point guard in the draft. He has some great go-to moves. He has a killer step back. He has good touch around the rim. He's an excellent playmaker, but he struggles with turnovers. When defenses apply pressure to him, sometimes he can break a bit, but the intangibles are there, the skill is there, and the talent is there. He's averaging 17, 4, and 8, shooting 48% from the field, and that's in a really tough German league, so these stats definitely hold value. He has playmaking abilities almost on par with the LaMelo ball if we look at the statistics, but he is more turnover prone. He also has a question about his jump shot just like LaMelo, although he shoots a bit higher, shooting that 30%. I wouldn't worry about it too much. When we look at his 88% from the free throw line, that means he probably has good mechanics behind his shot. He definitely has an ability to go up in this draft, depending on how the lottery arranges itself. But should he fall down to the Knicks, he'd definitely be a great option. He'd provide some scoring, some shooting, and another go-to guy aside from RJ. Another good guy to look at is Halliburton. Now, Halliburton is slotted to go at that seven slot. But when we look at Halliburton's numbers, he averaged 15, 6, and 6, shooting 50% from the field, 42 from 3, 82 from the line. He is also a pretty good defender. We have to question why isn't he higher on people's draft boards? Well, the issue with him is he has a lack of a go-to move, and he also has awkward form on his jump shot. These two things make people weary of him and think he may not have the ability to become a go-to player on the NBA level. Now, I see a lot of Goran Dragic, particularly from this last season with the Heat, in Halliburton's game. He hits threes well, but he prefers that catch and shoot three. A lot of his offense is coming from out there at that three-point line, but he's also a smart player, can facilitate the ball. So I definitely think that questions about his form shouldn't be so much of a threat, especially if you're drafting at that 7-8 slot. Cole Anthony is another name that pops up a lot. He's a hometown kid. He's slotted to go at 10, 
Now he's a stereotypical Scott Perry point guard, meaning he's always driving. He's always trying to get some buckets, get things going. So he's most likely on the Knicks radar. He struggled this last year due to a poor cast surrounding him, but he's a lot like Alonzo Trier. He's excellent on the dribble. He's probably one of the best shot creators in this draft, but he's a subpar playmaker. Another knock on him is that he only shoots 39% at that rim. That makes us question, how is he going to adjust to that next level? The Knicks definitely can look at someone on their own roster as the next primary playmaker, and that guy could be RJ Barrett. RJ was a good facilitator at Duke, averaging almost five assists per game, and that's on a poorly spaced Duke team. He also was a decent passer for a rookie on the Knicks, although he had a very up and down season and struggled primarily due to the fact that the Knicks lack spacing, something that RJ Barrett needs considering he's not a knockdown shooter. And they also lack talent. He can't really pass the ball to someone and let them go to work. RJ Barrett was also the third option on the team most of the season. If the Knicks decide to look for a secondary playmaker, they may look towards a guy like Denny Avdija. Denny has had his draft stock shooting up at 6'9", with the b-ball IQ, according to Jason Flippy of a Luka Doncic. Now that doesn't mean he has the gameplay of a Luka Doncic, but he has that understanding of the game, that high basketball IQ on par with the Luka Doncic. Now he's averaging 15, eight and three per 36, and he's shooting 52 and 37. He's shooting 14 and 29 in the Israeli league since they've returned. The Knicks may even consider trading down to get someone like RJ Hampton. Now, RJ Hampton is a big guard. He can attack, but RJ Hampton struggled a lot in the NBL this season. That may make Rose weary of making a move like this. He may not want to take a risk on a player who struggled in a league such as the NBL, which is definitely a level up from the NCAA but is not necessarily the Euro League. Now, according to Ian Begley, the Knicks are looking to add a stretch four. Of course, we all heard, oh, Christian Wood, the Knicks are gonna try to pursue him, but we know Detroit is unlikely to let him walk. I don't think the Knicks should be waiting on Christian Wood. If the Knicks have a chance to acquire a stretch four, that can definitely help unlock RJ and Mitch's game. There are definitely a couple in this draft. First and foremost, there's Obi Toppin. Now, Obi is pretty high on almost everybody's draft boards. He's probably the most polished player overall in this draft. He's a great finisher. He's a great athlete. He's confident with his handles. And he hits that three at a 39% clip. The only question is, can he do that at a higher volume? And of course, at the higher level of the NBA. Obi Toppin isn't shooting many threes. That's always a question. There's, of course, also Alexej Pokusevsky. He's slotted to go with that 28 pick, but as an 18-year-old seven-footer playing point forward out there in Europe, it definitely looks like a tantalizing situation out there. He pushes the ball. He can go coast to coast. He can play make. He has a good jumper. He shoots a lot of threes, but he definitely needs to raise that percentage up. And with a seven foot three wingspan, of course, he's a beast on the glass and he's a shot blocker. Some may look at his height as a limiting factor at that four. They may fear that he may not be mobile enough to keep up with these stretch fours now, especially guys in that Tobias Harris mold who are quick, athletic, and strong. But I will definitely say from watching film, he has that mobility of a true wing player and may be able to really be a seven foot point forward who can hold his own on the defensive end. With a front court of him and Mitch, that paint will definitely be protected. Another option is Jalen Smith, who slotted to go at that 24 slot. Now, he is another force from the inside. He knows how to get buckets. He's a capable shooter. 
but unfortunately he's another player who takes a limited amount of shots from outside the Knicks may be weary of that but if he should fall to us at that Clippers pick or even at that Hornets pick which I doubt then definitely he'll be an option the Knicks may also choose to prioritize shooting in general they may want to chase after a 3 and D player if they slide down low enough in the draft or if they happen to be high enough on either player they may trade down to try to acquire a guy like Devin Vassell or Sadiq Bey now Devin Vassell he started to go at that 11th pick and he's an efficient shooter he shoots 49% from the field 42 from three and a third of his game comes from behind that arc so he has good volume he has a strong step back and a good one dribble pull up Sadiq Bey is another option he slotted to go at 13. He's another strong shooter, hitting 45% from the three and shooting a massive three threes a game. So we know he has that volume. He has that capability. The Knicks may really choose to go after Tyler Bay, especially if he drops down low. He shoots 42% on threes and he's a defensive monster. Unfortunately, he only takes a limited amount of threes, but he definitely has a good stroke and he is a defensive beast. The Knicks will definitely make one of these moves and they may choose to balance it out. If they go after a primary playmaker like Killian Hayes or LaMelo Ball or Tyrese Halliburton, they may choose to balance it out with taking that later pick and going after someone like uh, Alexic Pokusevsky. Or if the Knicks decide that they trust RJ to carry the load, they may go after a Denny of Deja, who averages per 36 about three assists per game, which gives him a good secondary playmaker. And then with that later pick, try to attack someone like Pokusevsky, who per 36 is averaging almost five assists per game as well, giving you another point forward someone who can shoot the ball really right now the Knicks need shooter